This is my intro. There are many others like it, but this one is mine. Hi, welcome back to Boilerplate Socialism. My name is Dan. Normally I try to upload on Thursdays or Fridays, but I had to put my cat to sleep, so I had to take a day off to grieve. Anyways, thank you for being uh, appreciative. Thank you for being kind. Let's dive into today's episode, and uh, let's all pour a drink out for my little cat, Tommy. Thank you, everyone. So today I want to talk about class. Um, on the surface, this is an easy one. I think most of us at some point or another have identified as middle class. I definitely did, right up until the point where I had to get a job and pay my own rent. And that's when I realized that I was not middle class. In fact, the idea of middle class is really not a useful term because it can mean anything. Middle class is basically anyone who isn't sleeping under a bridge, but also isn't Jeff Bezos. So. It's incredibly vague, it's incredibly broad, and anyone more or less can identify as middle class, which is why it's not really useful scientifically or through social analysis. Class in the Marxist sense is your relationship to the means of production. In this case, there are two classes. You have the bourgeoisie or owner class, and you have the worker class or proletarian class. I choose to call them workers for the sake of brevity. The difference between the two classes is one of them owns the productive forces, one of them has to work. For example, Jeff Bezos proudly brags that he only makes three decisions a day, and he's one of the richest men on earth. Now imagine a barista at Starbucks that only makes three lattes a day. See how long they would be working at their job. Class is, in this case, is different from class in the religious sense, like the Indian caste system. That's a religiously hereditary derived thing that has its roots in feudal production. It can exist side by side with modern capitalist class in India, but for the sake of, being, for the sake of staying within my wheelhouse, I'm just going to talk about the Western world, Canada, USA, Western Europe, and places like that. In these places, there are broadly two classes, workers and owners. There's no real middle class. There's no professional managerial class. These are all fictions. Those people are just one or two missed paychecks away from being homeless. There are people who own the factories, own the businesses, and there are people who actually have to work. There's a small group of people called the petite bourgeoisie, or small business owners. These are people who materially have more in common with the workers, but many of them unfortunately do have, shall we say, owner aspirations or bourgeoisie aspirations. These are the small businesses, the people who run stores on Etsy, the people on YouTube who are able to make a living working 80 odd hours a week. These are people who employ themselves, sometimes employ others, but they still have to work despite owning a productive thing. Although it can be taken away from them and such is the nature of capitalism that due to its winner take all competition, these people will eventually be forced out of their homes, out of their businesses and either folded into the workforce or thrown onto the street. An example of this would be Walmart crushing every single mom and pop store it can find. These people are small business owners and capitalism is destroying them. Now class is relatively easy to understand. You, know, you are an owner or you are a worker. Why is this important? Well the important thing is, is that in the West at least, people have been strongly, very strongly discouraged from identifying with their class. At least from my generation, being a millennial, I was taught to identify with brands as a consumer. And as a video gamer, I know all about the, um, the video game fandoms. You're a Sony guy, you're a PC guy, you're an Xbox guy, you're a Nintendo guy. You know, the joke is gamers rise up. But what if gamers rose up against their oppressive corporations that rip them off time and time again? I bring up gaming because it is a microcosm for life. People are, at least generally, encouraged to identify with what they consume. You're, you buy Sony games, so you're a Sony guy. You know, you're not a worker. This is why so many people at uh, retail stores are so terrible to the staff. Just for a little while, they can feel like a king while they lord it over a service worker. And the truth is, these people have more in common with a service worker than they ever will with someone like Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates or anyone like that or Warren Buffett. You know, take your pick. And the importance of class is that it allows people to develop class solidarity. That's what we want, not just as Marxists, but as human beings with functional empathy. 
Think about the Starbucks movement. They've unionized approximately 100 stores and counting. In Canada, they've unionized three. And in many cases, they've done so in stiff opposition. But the workers have done this because they realize that their interests and the interests of management and the owners are not the same thing. You know, it's the, um, it's the fox and the hens or the, uh, you know, the homeowner and the burglar. You have completely irreconcilable differences. And in a way, the, the unionization of Starbucks and Amazon and places like that is people developing a class consciousness. These are career service workers who realize that their loyalty will not be rewarded. Their hard work will not be rewarded. If they work harder, then that just means that's the new standard and management will hold them to that every single time until they burn out. You know, this is not anomalous what happens with Amazon. This is what happens every modern business. We're far from the times in the 1950s where loyalty was rewarded, you'd be promoted based on seniority and things like that. And arguably even that system wasn't so great because if you're a woman or a person of color or a queer person, you'd be discriminated against and thrown out onto the streets or possibly killed. What I would like is to see more people identify with their class, to realize that they have more in common with the teller at the bank, you know, the worker at McDonald's or anyone like that because we are all workers. And being a worker isn't just about wearing a hard hat, eating your lunch when steam whistle blows, and banging away at rocks like Fred Flintstone. You know, the, three the three Starbucks union locations have all been folded in under a steelworkers union. And this is because ultimately the steelworkers and the baristas have the same material interests. They're working, and their work is hard, and they're not rewarded for hard work. The work is different. Perhaps the risk they take is different, but ultimately, at the end of the day, they are working class people. So, yes, I am trying to get people to think about class, think about their relation to class, and realize that you are not a temporarily embarrassed millionaire. You are, in fact, a, a worker, I want to say. I hope I've made this clear. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments. I welcome a respectful, insightful discussion. I'll try to post again next week on Thursday or Friday, all things depending. Remember to like and subscribe, and I strongly recommend a great Marxist movie called A Bug's Life. Please watch that one. That'll tell you all you need to know mostly about Solidarity. Thank you, and have a great day. This is my outro. There are many others like it, but this one is mine.